Hello, hope you're having a good day. Welcome to Back of the Net. My name's Sam Davis. My name's Tom Jordan. And Tom, mm. we love a tier list, don't we? We are partial to a little tier list, aren't we, mate? And look, we're always trying to be on topic here at Back of the Net. So when England played in the week against Ivory Coast, there was a certain player that attracted a little bit of booing, mate. It wasn't nice to see, was it? No, it was weird, really odd. I still can't really get my head around it. But yeah, Harry Maguire obviously had a bit of bit of grief not to see the manager and the team supporting him and it was just a I think in the grand scheme of things it was a small section wasn't it but yeah it just shows that fans want to voice their opinions all the time so time for us to do one yeah a tier list. well exactly it it got the cogs mm. going and I thought out of the players that have departed AFC Bournemouth which ones do we still hold in high regard which ones is there maybe a little bit of an ill feeling over? So, look, naturally, we don't condone booing whatsoever. AFC Bournemouth fans, we're more classier than that. I think we are anyway, but we've all got our favourites right, and we've all got those who we'd probably rather not talk about. So we've got a tier list. Tom, do you want to know how it works? Go on, then. Well, it's a tier list, of course. This is the tier list on screen right now, and we've got a number of faces and we've got a number of tiers. The tiers go from top to bottom. Tom, what we got at the top? At the top, still adore the guy. So someone that we literally hold in great regard. And we just, yeah, I just, I just adore him and love him, always will. Yeah, next, we've got, like seeing him do well. So you've still got that soft spot. You're not, maybe not enough to say you adore him, but you're thinking, no, I still look out and think, I hope they're doing well, it was a good move. Okay, what's bang in the middle? Nah, non plus really. It's yeah. kind of, yeah, I'm not really fussed about it either way. All right, after that? Less said the better. So a little bit of ill feeling there, maybe like left under a bit of a cloud and you're kind of, you're a little bit like, oh, it's a little bit of a chuckle if they're not doing so well, but not enough to absolutely despise them. Um, and yeah, at the bottom, just no. Can't <laughs> stand him. Someone that, you know, I like to think over the years, we haven't had too many of them and most clubs don't, but there's always a few in there that you just think, I really want them to struggle now. Yeah, absolutely. So look, We've got a list of every player that has left the club since we were in the Premier League and beyond. Look, we could be talking about Luther Blissett, we could be talking about Ian Bishop or whatever. We're not. We are only doing since the Premier League. So the criteria is this. Players that have departed the Cherries for good within the last uh, five or so seasons. So, i.e. that's not loans of current Cherries players to other clubs. Um, that includes players who've played more than three games for the Cherries in the league. So that means Ryan Alsop, not on the list. Juan Turbe with two appearances, mm. not in the list. But we will be doing those with three and above. And Tom, we also are mm. going to offer a free pass to a number of ex-Cherries, aren't we? Namely, the legendary... 11. I mean, it would be 12, but Brett Pittman, of course, didn't have any appearances in the league, uh, in the Premier League. So we've got this beautiful 11. Yeah, I mean, like you say, it's, uh, we've got to mention it, but it would be pointless because all of them I adore, every single one of them. So, yeah, it would just be wasted a bit of everyone's time, really. We all know how much we love the lot of them. And shame, really, a few of them ain't playing anymore, but then a few of them are still at the club. A few of them recently left. So, um, yeah, a bit of a variety there, but yeah, we love them all. So that goes without saying. No point in mentioning them, mate. Yeah, no point in mentioning. And it's also worth saying, it's how we feel now towards yeah. them, isn't it? Because I think, unless they're a legend, I think it's natural to feel maybe a bit aggrieved mm. and bitter once they've left the club in the immediacy of the situation. So this is how we feel maybe a few years later in some yeah. circumstances. Yeah, trying to reflect a little bit on how we feel. Like, like you say, it's sometimes you have that frustration, you have that bitterness... When it, when it initially happens. Now you can look back a little bit more um, and obviously it depends on a lot of things and, and how you're doing and, and you can just kind of look back on it and say, now looking at it, did they leave for the right reasons? Do, does it make more sense? So yeah, a bit of reflection on it, a bit of time because in the heat of the moment, you probably don't like many of them when they leave. Mm, exactly. So before we begin, where are we, Tom? Well, oh, we're at the pair. We're at the pair. We're at the pair for a change. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's a bit nippy, but... A bit of sun out, so we thought, you know, we'll do it outside and we'll see how it goes. But yeah, lovely pub, the Power. I think we might have mentioned that one two, three, four times. Um, but yeah, lovely pub. We love doing a pod out here, don't we, mate? Check the link in the description below for their website and make sure you come here for a drink or some food as well. Top, top food. Right then, there's the tier list. Let's get started come. with this bad boy. We have got 32 names 
32 players that have left us since the Premier League. And we're going to do it in alphabetical order. And look, we're, we're like five and a half minutes into the video already. We'll be zipping through it fairly quick. Some players will get yep. more of a mention than others. But the first one, A, it's Aaron Ramsdale. Mm. Mate, where are you putting this guy and why? Uh, and it's actually probably trickier than most people think. I reckon a lot of people go, oh, we adore him. Because I, cause in certain ways I do. And I really like what he's doing. I mean, I still love him. Um, and he's doing brilliant there. But we've got, and he's obviously getting on the English squad now. We've got to remember, he didn't leave us for Arsenal. Mm. He left us for Sheffield United. Mm. And there, was, there is still a little part of me, don't get me wrong, hindsight has worked out brilliantly for him, hasn't it? And he wouldn't have changed what he did. But I, could he give us one more season? Mm. I feel like he could have given us one more season. Um, but we got decent money for him. Well, we paid, what, a million and sold him for 18? Yeah. Plus when Sheffield United yeah. sold him, when Arsenal sell him. Yeah. We'll probably get some cash as well. Exactly. So I think it is a, a good deal. Want to see him do well, all them sort of things. But to go right in that top, I've got to have no qualms, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And I just feel like there was that little part of me that felt, could could he have maybe stayed one more season for us? Yeah. It was only Sheffield, no disrespect to Sheffield United, but they were probably going to come down anyway, which they did. So he could have maybe done one more. So f just for that reason, I'm going to put him in like seeing him do well. But he's very close to the top, and I, I appreciate a lot of people would probably put him one higher, but hopefully you can understand the reasons there. Like seeing him do well, and yeah, really love that commercial he did for Arsenal, supporting yeah. local businesses. Your chips are superb stuff. And look, I think also I like him as well because he was an underdog to many Arsenal, mm. well, to many Bournemouth fans when he went to Arsenal. He had to sort of prove himself because he was an unknown. He's been relegated with all these sides, etc. So he had a point to prove, and that's why I do hold him in high regard. But, yeah, probably you're right with regards to that. Adam Federici next. It's uh, two keepers in a row. Yeah, probably not. Uh, don't need to go into this too much detail. I understood why we signed him when we went up to the Premier League as kind of a backup keeper. He stepped in. I always remember him being a bit of a hero at Preston away when I went up there on a midweek game um, in a cup. Apart from that, he filled in, done OK. Expected him to leave when he did. Meh. Non plus, mate. Uh, yeah. I have, you know, not, I don't even, I, I put it this way, I don't dis, dislike the guy. I think he was all right, but I don't have a clue what he's doing now, if he's mm. retired or not. I don't know. So, yeah, got to be in the middle. All right. We've got a player next who, when he started for us in the Premier League, he didn't really get many minutes. Um, and that season, I, I wasn't really sure on who he'd signed, but he certainly announced himself in the Championship. Arnaud Danjuma. Wow. Just a bit, yeah. Um, nearly single-handedly -hand took us up last season, mm. I felt. Carried us at times. And he's still doing incredible he's stuff now for Villarreal. Champions League, he was, he's scoring goals, like La Liga scoring goals. And we've got a sell-on clause for him as well. Got a sell-on clause. I think, his, I think his release fee is like 70-odd million. You're joking. Um, I know Eddie's having a little sniff around again, apparently, with Newcastle, even Liverpool, teams like that. Oh, I mean, what a guy. I feel for him, because that first season, he clearly was a fit. He was getting little mm. knocks and... You know, we, we, we weren't going to prepare for going down, so we probably thought, edge him in, season after he'll be big in the Premier League. Unfortunately for our now and for us, we were in the Championship, but, I mean, what more could the guy do in the Championship for us? Um, even the both them legs against Brentford in the playoffs, mm. he nearly carried us, but, I mean, when I see him doing what he's doing in the Champions League, I just love it, so I adore him. Yeah. I absolutely adore him, because how, how anyone could say, oh, why did he leave? He had to, I mean, come on, he should yeah. be in the Championship for two seasons. And so you get a gauge him. of how much he's loved by all the retweets and all the likes that appear on your Twitter timeline for weeks and months afterwards, and they're still retweeting stuff now when he scores yeah. a couple of goals for Villarreal, so yeah. Good with the fans um, as well. Yeah, it? very good with the fans as well. I'll tell you what, I really, really gutted that, that his season was behind closed doors and that COVID. Mm. I would have loved to have been in that stadium more, watching Arnie do all I that stuff. I think I saw him play. I remember him coming on at Spurs. No, was it Watford? I don't know. Spurs, I remember. Yeah, uh, but yeah, yeah Watford away. I went with you and he played, yeah. Um, but not enough. enough. No, exactly. Not enough. enough. Okay. Asmir Begovic. Is it me or all our keepers start with A? Yeah, that's a good point, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Didn't think of that. Um, Asmir Begovic. Arta Boric is another one. What yeah, is that? Of course, yeah. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? Anyway, yeah, Asmir Begovic then. Oh, sorry, my head was going to try and figure more. Um, <laughs> yeah. Asmir Begovic, yeah, interesting one, because I actually feel like he was probably, didn't do what we expected when we first got him in. I remember thinking he's going to be a massive, 
a massive leap ahead of Boruch, and he come in and I thought, is he that much better? And did he have a bit of a falling out with Eddie at the time? Seemed like it. Less, less in favour? Seemed like it, and I, don't, I think his wages were pretty high, so when we realised he wasn't that much of a level above and Rambo come back in, we sent him out on loan, didn't we, a few times. Uh, but then, when called upon in the Championship, we never thought we'd see him again under Jay. So he was unbelievable. Mm. Unbelievable for us last season. A bit like Dan Juma. So, Norm, I think if he didn't have that last season, I, I wouldn't have been too happy. But to be honest, now, when I see him come in, he come in recently when picked for that injury for Everton. Mm. And I want to see him do well. Mm. I want to see him do well. So I'm going to put him in the same category as Rambo. and uh, like seeing him do well, because he was incredible for us last season. Now we've got an interesting one. Benica Fobe. Uh, mm. And I suspect that the feeling then is maybe different to now. And there are personal reasons for that. And there are also recently on-pitch reasons why we might like him a bit more. But t talk to me very briefly about what you thought of him at AFC Bournemouth. Because, look, when he played, it coincided with our best yep. finish ever. Yeah, it did. And um, Josh King reaped the rewards of that, being up there with Benick. I think... It's a weird one because we were talking about Callum Wilson. I think our best partnership was Benekafopi and Josh King mm. statistically. And um, I actually think people forget when he came in in that January first season in the Premier League. He scored some crucial goals. Scored away at Palace, got the winner. Mm. Um, he got a diving header, I remember, at Sunderland, which was a bit of a relegation scrap at the time, that I felt none of our other strikers would have got that diving header. Mm. Scored some crucial goals for us. Um, in the end, he just missed some, some good chances and it probably glossed over all them other chances that he, that he actually buried. And yeah, but he was only, he was, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, he was 10 million quid, which we then got back anyway. Mm. I, I didn't dislike him, but at the time when he left, it was that thing about him, oh, I was crying in my car when I realised I could move and all yeah. this, and kind of like, all right, mate, I'm an heck. And so I was a bit bitter about it. Now, reflecting, and I remember saying to you, actually, not long ago, I thought, before we signed Key for More, I thought, I'll take Bennett to be mm. our, you know, up there with Dom or a replacement. He wouldn't be bad in the champ, would he? And he's proven that. And I almost, yeah, we've seen him have some personal issues and things. But I, I almost now I think, actually, when he scores for Millwall, whoever it's against, I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. So that's got to play into it. So, yeah, I think this is one, as you say, I think this has changed. But I'm going to put him in like seeing him do well, because I do now. Like seeing do. him do well. It, it, I don't know where that police car is, but it sounds like it's not moving and it's not chasing anyone. It's annoying, so right? maybe the traffic's so bad. Brad Smith, then, uh, signed from Liverpool for, what, £6 million or something like that, wasn't it? It was yeah, a lot of money. Four to six or something. Four to six or yeah, something. And something. Uh, Just didn't never, work. never really made inroads in the side, did he? No, nah, it didn't work. I think he was another one. Uh, I think we've had that of both fullback positions that they've really struggled to replace Smith and Daniels, any fullbacks we've got in. Um, Adam Smith, I'm talking about. But Brad Smith come in and... Um, he, he seemed to get injuries. It just didn't work for him. But did he give us all when he played? Yes. But did he play enough? No. Was I bothered when he went? No. Do I know where he is now? I ain't got a clue. Meh. Yeah. Meh. Not plus about that. Yeah. In with Federici. OK. Um, Cameron Cart Vickers is a, a player that sadly not many of us, well, none of us actually managed to watch him live. Would have. We, oh, no. He played in that one playoff. Yeah. 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 The one game in Brentford. Yeah. So we would have seen him then. And look. He had a pretty good partnership going on, didn't he? He actually, um, he did all right for us, but I've got to say, no idea whether he's getting first-team football now, wherever he is. I, I'm pretty sure he's playing for Celtic okay. quite regularly. I would have thought so. so I know he went to Celtic. Um, he was one that, when he come in, we thought, oh, he's, he's decent, actually. But I, I, I always said I felt for, like, Jason, I like, brought him in and I never got to use him. Yeah, yeah. And he was just injured forever. Um, when he cut... Yeah, Jason signed Ben Pearson. And yeah. Carter Vickers. Yeah, and didn't get to and use him. them. Um, and Shane Long will come on to. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, Carter Vickers, sort of when he came in, but didn't play enough football for us for me to really have too much of an opinion. I definitely don't dislike the guy, but do I really look out for him? No. So I'm going to put him in the middle as well. Yeah. Meh. There we go. Come but he's Carter decent Vickers. when he played. Brilliant stuff. OK, uh, next we've got Dan Gosling, a player that, uh, you know, did feature quite heavily in our championship season, mm. not as much as the other midfield too, but um, possibly a legend in his own right. He performed wonders for us, scored many an important goal for us in the Premier League. And then, and then came this, this move to, to Watford, which obviously put the noses out of joint for a number of AFC Bournemouth fans. And Watford, they sort of used him quite intensively at the, to start off with. And then after that... Sort of, sort of died the death, really, and uh, not even sure whether he's on the bench these days. No, no, I know what you mean. It was a, it was a weird one at the time, but I don't think for Dan Gosling. I totally, Dan Gosling won't get any minutes, and I, I could totally see why he wanted to go and play football. 
Um, and Watford offered him that. I think it was Forrest coming as well, didn't they? He ended up going to Watford. It was more, I've said, I thought, it's a bit weird strengthening a rival, if you like. Mm. But he wasn't playing for us. But at the end of the day, mate, I just think he was close to being in that Legends eleven that we just mentioned. Yeah. He always put a shift in for us, scored some crucial goals. That one at Stamford Bridge yeah. in the relegation season. He, he was he was ledge for me, and I always want to see him do well. It was just a shame where he went at the time. But um, I love Goss, mate. I adore him. So, still what, adore the guy. I've got, I've got him, mate. Yeah. He was, I think he's, he was excellent servant for the club. And just a, just a hard-working player yeah. as well. He just worked really hard. And Fans yeah. like them tour players. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right, Diego Rico, mate. Um, hmm. This is, this is a tough one because yeah. I would say his off-pitch persona was liked more than his on-pitch persona. Probably agree with that. And even, even on-pitch, it wasn't for his footballing ability or lack of. No. It was him, he g'd up the crowd, he yeah. seemed to love it. And it was hard not to, not to like him. It was hard not to like him. But then, equally, he wasn't as good as I thought he'd be. Yeah. Uh, when we signed him, he looked like he had a bit of pace, thought he'd be decent. Was he the last free kick that we've scored, though? Maybe. Oh, he might have been. I don't know if June's got one since. Yeah, he <laughs> might have been. Was it? I mean, not that that's a reason to change your mind. But. I um, yeah, I did love that guy, and I think that was the key thing when it, when he scored. I loved it. Yeah, I'm really yeah. pleased for him, and it's a difficult one because it's really hard for me because I think I'm not. I don't dislike him, but because of how he was for us, he can't be really high because no. he wasn't a success. Having said that, I'm thinking about it now and go, I do kind of want to see him do all right. Yeah. But as much as Rambo, Begovic and Afobi, probably not. I'm going to put him in the middle, mate. Yeah. But likeable character, but I'm thinking of on-the-pitch stuff. He wasn't good enough for us, in my opinion. It didn't quite work, so I'm going to put him in the middle. And he's getting a bit of European football this season as well himself, isn't he? He's playing with David Silva and Real Sociedad, <laughs> going for La Liga. Absolutely incredible. But I think that's the thing. I think certain players suit certain styles of football. And I can imagine him being an all-right left-back in La Liga. Mm. But Premier League and Championship, I think it was that he just got caught too much that he didn't really know where he fit in. So, uh, hard to see Rico ever get two games in a row where he played well. Mm. That was a problem. Where's Union O'Kane these days, mate? Oh, I feel for him. I think he's... Oh, yeah. Someone will let me know. I feel like he might still be a Leeds player. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, he might still be a Premier League player, I don't know. <laughs> he had a leg break at Leeds, and then I think he went on to Luton and had a leg break. So, he's, uh, he's been really suffering with injuries. But people forget, in League One, he was keeping Ariata out of the team for a little bit. Um, I, I really like Yuno Kane, always had done. I thought he was brilliant for us up the leagues. He actually started the first cut of Pren games, I think, for us. Well, I remember, West, yeah, West Ham. West Ham. Yeah, he was instrumental in, in how we played. In that. He was good. Yeah, we started the Prem with, um, without Harry Arter. He was injured until about October, November. And I think it was kind of Sermon with O'Kane or Goslin. Mm. And O'Kane was right. And then he had a shocker, I remember, at Norwich. And Goslin yeah. got the minutes more. But I liked O'Kane. really liked him. I really feel for him in terms of them injuries. But he's up there with Goslin for me in terms of being close to that legend. So I don't think he ever let us down, mate. I always remember scoring a screamer at Wigan as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I just like him, and I, I really feel for him. But um, no, I'm gonna. Oh, do I go top? Yeah, I'm going top. Still adore the guy. Still adore. Yeah, the guy. I do. I do. I love. I love Uni and Esther. Love him. There are no Gavin Kilkenny is the new O'Kane. Very <laughs> similar footballers. I think Kilkenny's got a higher ceiling. I think yeah. he can get further, but very similar players, both Irish. Yeah. A few players for AFC Bournemouth have got this kind of status based on um, individual moments. Yeah. Mohamed Berta, when he <laughs> played for Bournemouth, that goal against Wigan. Uh, and there are loads of players that you can remember individual moments, one of which is Glenn Murray. Yeah. Have a guess which goal I'm talking about. Well, Chelsea, right? Oh, not the Man City 5-1 defeat? No. Um, yeah, what a moment that was. He, he'll always be remembered for that. A little bit Cameron Jones-esque, isn't it? Yeah. Like, always be remembered for that goal. Um, Glenn was one that I felt we only bought him in because Callum had that injury, and he yeah. was bought in because it was relatively cheap. It made sense at the time, but he wasn't a Bournemouth-type player in Eddie Howe's system, was mm. he? He was a backup option. And when he was asked to lead the line in his own and try and run the channels, it was a nightmare. And we ended up quite quickly going to Josh King doing that role and Muzz off the bench. But he was experienced. He scored a few goals for us. He wasn't brilliant, but he wasn't horrendous. But he did score such a big goal that will always live with me, mate. So for that and that alone, like seeing him do well. Like seeing him do well. OK, brilliant stuff. We've got a player next uh, who's currently playing in the Championship for, and will probably get promoted. Harry Wilson. Came on loan, scored... Scored a number of goals, uh, had a number of chances that I felt he should have probably done better with as well, which could have kept us in the Premier League. But um, one of a left foot. Thoughts on him now, though? I don't like him. Um, statistically, oh. statistically, I think people would say he was all right. But I think if you're a Bournemouth fan watching this, I don't think he was as good as we thought he'd be. I think, he, yeah, he can hit a few screamers. He can hit a few screamers, and we know he's got that in his locker. But we were getting him on low from Liverpool. He'd just been world-class at bloody Derby. He was unbelievable. 
and he, the only season he played for us, we got relegated. Um, and I felt in big moments, big games, he missed some sitters. Um, and he didn't contribute enough to the team, in my opinion. Unless he was hitting one from miles out when he was going mm. top corner, which, as I say, he's got his locker. I don't think he was giving enough to the team. And then I'm just looking at the whole context of it. And then, and then we go, all right, we're not going to keep you. Then everyone agreed we're never going to keep him. Then he goes to bloody Fulham, who are our rivals, and absolutely smashes it again. He's absolutely on fire for him. So there is bitterness because of that. Um, I'm kind of using this just no, can't stand him category in my head to be like, would I boo them? That's what I'm going with. I think you, it, you're a nice football fan. You don't boo anyone. I, I boo some people. But it's very rare. So I'm thinking the only people I'm going to put in that category is if I think I'd boo them. We well, went to uh, Fulham this season and I booed him. Ooh! Get him in that bottom category. <laughs> I'm bitter and I know he's a good footballer. But for us, I'm telling you, I reckon he would say it as well. Playing in the Cups for Liverpool, playing for Derby, playing for Fulham and playing for Bournemouth, he was weakest for Bournemouth. I don't think he showed up for us. Jack Simpson then, player mm. that came up through the ranks and was utilised to some extent, not to the extent that he wished. Yeah. And then he went off to Rangers. <sighs> Bit part player for Rangers, I think, was a kind of expected. Probably played a similar kind of like a mepham role for us, playing now and again, mm. but not probably first name on the team sheet. Um, really difficult one with Jack. I felt, he, I felt sorry for him a lot of the time because I felt he was a young player coming through that was put in a deep end a lot. He would like suddenly have a game and he'd be at the Etihad yeah, yeah. or a bit at Anfield and you think, oh God, and then he'd make one. He was trying to play the Eddie Way and play out and he'd get caught, wouldn't he? Well, I think it was, um, do you remember when um, AFC Bournemouth, before lockdown, we played Liverpool, yeah, Steve Cook went off injured mm. and then it was a Jack Simpson blooper that let in yeah. either Mo Salah or Sane, um, Mane, I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah, but, the game. yeah, it did. Yeah, and uh, but I, I mean, he's a young lad. He just, he just, it kept happening for him. Like yeah, every yeah. time we'd get an injury, it'd be in a big game, and he'd have huge. Game. Yeah, because every time I saw him in kind of cups and that, I thought oh, I'd, I'd like it. There's something yeah. about him. The problem I think he has, he didn't have enough pace. I feel like if he had pace, Tyndall used him a few times in about three, and I mm. thought he looked all right. I remember going to some of them games where there was a ballot or whatever, the Huddersfield, I think yeah, it was, yeah. and I thought he looks all right, but it just didn't quite happen. I think it was the right time for him to move on. It's a difficult one for me because I want to see him do well because he come through the ranks. But I'm looking at the other players as much as Rambo, as much as Murray Nair. Nah. No. So I'm going to put him in the middle as mayor because yeah. I don't really look out to see how he's doing. But uh, no, I agree. There's definitely no bitterness. Whilst he's whilst he's a sort of he's a product of the academy, isn't mm. he? But usually that would make me like them a bit more. But I've got to say he was used so infrequently that yeah. I'm 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 with you on that one. So okay, uh, Jack Wilshire. Yeah, Jack. Oh, it just. I just, his whole career, I feel for him. I feel he's a water player, but playing out in Denmark, isn't he, now? Um, so he had two loans with us. Two he had two loans. loans. First one was when we finished, the highest ever finish. Yeah. And I thought he was incredible. And I thought Eddie utilised him so well. Yeah. So well, yeah. because, you know, we were playing him in and out of the team, and he was just, and he kept him fit for a long period. And you've heard interviews that Jack Walsh has done on various uh, media outlets where he praises Eddie Howe so much Big for time. the style of training. Like, he's yeah. really thankful for him for resurrecting his career at the time. Yeah, and I, I thought he was really good, and we absolutely loved him, didn't we? And uh, he was one of the... In that season, that Premier League, I thought he's one of the best players I've seen in a Bournemouth shirt for, for, for ability. Yep. It's just, just class act. It's just as it always is with Jack, fitness injuries. But were we all buzzing when he started training with the club again and then Tyndall gave him a little contract? We all were. Uh, didn't quite work out with him. Uh, Woodgate ended up putting Billion in the role that he's playing now and it meant that Jack was a bit part. I even loved him, though, coming on against Watford and getting sent yeah. off, just having a bit about him. But I do love Jack Wilshire and I do always want to see what he's doing. And... Do you adore him, though? I do. Yeah, I adore him. Wow! Yeah, I adore him. Heard about that? Yeah, I am. Because I fought for Bournemouth. He always gave us all. And we all knew his injury problems. But, um, yeah, superb. What is it with players beginning with Jay that have two loan stints at AFC Bournemouth? Mm. We don't Jermaine Defoe next. <laughs> Obviously, first time round is irrelevant. We'll, we'll, right. we'll, we'll sort of base it on what he did since we were in the Premier League. And look, scored some brilliant goals. That world at Crystal Palace. The Brighton goal and, you know, numerous other strikes... Yeah. Um, however, it didn't, didn't really work out for him, and you got the sense that he was getting frustrated with mm. what he was being asked to do. Yeah, I think the, the problem for, for JD was he come in and to lead the line in Premier League for us in the intensity and the way that Eddie Howe wanted to play was always going to be difficult of him, of, of his age. He wasn't maybe as good as I expected him to be when he came yeah. back on loan, but crucial goals. I remember that Brighton game at home. We yeah. I don't think we'd won that season yet. And um, he scored the winner. That's live on Sky, wasn't it? Yeah, big moment. Yeah. It's 
double against Palace, which was class. Mm. I think he scored a last minute leveller at Watford. Did score some crucial he goals still. It. Yeah. And um, I did like him, and I always gave us all, and I, I loved the foe, and I always want to see him do well, which has got to be in my thinking here. I think if we had put in. I mean, obviously, he's now retired, but just assuming very he recently. was... Yeah. yeah, if he's sorry, yeah, if he was. But, but what I mean is, if he goes on, like, coach or something, yeah. I want to see him, do you know yeah. what I mean? I think if we had put into play that 10 in a row when he was a young kid, yeah. then there's no doubt about it, he's right at the top. Yeah. But we're going off that one, I'm just going to put him in like seeing him do well. Like Not quite in the top category. Like seeing him do well. Um, OK, next we've got uh, Jordan Ibe, who was a £15 million signing from Liverpool. At that point in time, we, we sort of... We wrote blank checks... <laughs> to the hierarchy at Anfield. Uh, Jordan Ibe was one of them, uh, and it's fair to say his, uh, his Bournemouth career wasn't as fruitful as we all liked. No, didn't work. Didn't work. I think we just lost Matt, Matt Ritchie uh, to Newcastle. Mm. Bought in Jordan Ibe, and I thought, I'll take that. That's not too bad. That's not a bad little swap, mm. really. Oh, a lot of talent. I could see why we got him in. Just didn't work. Didn't work for him. It, it seems like there's obviously on, off-field issues. He's barely, done, he's barely kicked the football since he left us, and it was a long time ago. Yeah. So I feel for him, and I hope he's doing all right. Signed for Derby, didn't really play, or didn't ever play. I'm yeah, sure. I think he was like training with Derby, and, and they, they literally have got no money. Yeah. And they could have just added him. Like, I think they've done the same with like Ravel Morrison and Jaggy Elker at the time and things like that, kind of just signed three players, mm. and they didn't even sign him. Mm. Um, I really feel for him. and uh, is I hope Turkey now, is he? Or I think he might be, yeah. I, and I really, I do hope... It's, this is one that I've got a caveat, because when I say I like to see him do well, not, not to that degree, just, just that I want to see him playing football and enjoying himself, because it sounds like he's had a lot of personal stuff going on, which is, which is sad, that's away from the football. In terms of the football, he wasn't good enough, it didn't work for him. With every game he played poorly, confidence, you just get seeped yeah. out of him, and no one could say that he didn't give him enough chances, no. he, kept, he kept playing him, just didn't work, mate, which well, I'm gutted about, but simple fact of the matter is... When he played for us, he was rubbish. Mm. He was rubbish. Yeah, and so. off-field problems, I want to see do well. But as a footballer, less said the better. First less one in that category, said mate. the better. Yeah. But I don't despise the guy and I'd never boo him. You're right. I think it's one of those that could either be in two or it could be in four. Because like you said, you know, yeah. there, there's a sort of mental health side of things that you, you, know, you obviously want to see him do OK. But we've got to stick to football as much as we can, yeah. really. Um, Josh King. This one is... Uh, the hardest one for me. It's really hard when you think about it. When you think about what he did for us, the goals yeah. he scored for us, but it's fair to say that his AFC Bournemouth career peaked earlier. It's not, a lo it's not like he peaked at the very end. I, uh, this one, I still don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm going to do because I think he's still got the most goals for us in the Premier League. Yep. Uh, I think he scored the most goals for us in the Premier League, so everyone goes, well, legend then. Come in the club for nothing. I think we paid compensation, didn't we? A million, burn. maybe. Yeah. yeah, was a winger. We kind of played him in the 10-4, he ain't that good. Then Wilson got the injury, ended up playing up front of the zone, helped keep us up. Magnificent, scored some crucial goals, United. I mean, unbelievable. Mm. When the going got tough, a lot of them players that we got relegated in the Premier League weren't at it, so I'm not going to put that all on him. But when the go got tough, Tyndall needed him, and he was still at the club. He didn't want, you could tell he didn't want to be there, mm. coming off that. You think he, he could be ripping his league up if he wanted to. And then he decided, you know what, I'm going to leave, go to Everton, not play any football, get let go by Everton at the end of the season and then go to Watford yeah. and I'm not being funny I reckon if you put a bet on now you, you would say most people unbiased would say Bournemouth have got more chance of being in the Premier League than Watford next season mm. in my opinion just close Watford can still yeah. stay up we can still not go up and he could be in the Championship next season mm. and there's a part of me that would laugh but then there's another part of me that thinks I love Josh King yeah. and really difficult but you know what I was saying earlier about when Bennett scores for Millwall mm. I go oh get in Bennett yeah well done and when Josh King scores for Watford I think oof yeah. But Josh King was better for us. Yeah, he So I'm was. finding it really, really difficult. I'd love people to let me know. Is it because it's Watford as well? Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit. I think it's because if, if you're going to go from us because you feel like, which I think he's rightly so, he scored the most goals from the Premier League, because you don't feel like you should be yeah. playing the Championship, don't go to Watford. Yeah. Because give it a season, we'll probably be in the league above him anyway. Yeah. It's showing that now. Yeah. And he's doing all right for Watford. I think Watford don't mind him. But yeah, I don't... It left a bit of taste in my mouth, but he was great in a Bournemouth shirt. I 100% wouldn't boo the guy. If, if he had gone to Everton like he did and was ripping it up and they were in the top half of the league, I'd probably clap him. Yeah. Now I wouldn't clap. I don't... I, it's so... I want people I to let me know. help up, Tom. But I can't... But the problem is, you think, I'll oh, just go middle then. But I can't say I'm non plus because I'm thinking about it too much. <laughs> Sam? Yeah? I'm giving it to you. Oh. I can't do it. It's between two and four. I want to I know what your... I'll give you both points. What's your kind of... What are you just edging towards? 
because I'm really struggling. I wanted him to do well at Everton because I know yeah. that he can be a talented player, but sometimes I think, and he showed this for Bournemouth, sometimes he lets his attitude dominate a little bit. I feel like that well. Uh, and for that reason, I, I'm going to put him in less said the better. Oh, controversy from Davis. No, but I, I, I was edging towards that. He just doesn't uh, sit right with me. I think I think he's a I think but he's yeah. a great player, and he did. Got to be honest. And he and he he did do really well for Bournemouth. However, I've got to say that that last season just sticks in the throat yeah. uh, a little bit too much. He was kind of wheeled out for the cup, and then made a couple of, and there were times where he had a migraine so uh, yeah true the, the migraine and, and I still I still look at it and think Tyndall was your assistant for you he really needed you sorry Josh he really needed you in that moment JT do you know what I mean he's coming for Eddie he was behind closed doors it was going to be really tough for him we you know he really needed him and I just don't think he gave us all we won't know we we don't know all the behind the scenes stuff but that's how it felt I think there were a number of players in the championship season our first championship season when yeah. we got relegated that uh could thought that they were Premier League players without demonstrating yeah. that they were Premier League players and he was definitely one of them. Yeah. Um, and then he joins a Premier League side and he almost still carried that attitude with him to Goodison yeah. Park, didn't play well and now he's in a side that's going to go back to the Championship. So exactly. in a way, possibly serves him right. I, I would love to see him do well uh, in, in the future, future yeah. but I right think now... We, yeah, I think we caveat <laughs> I think if we go in bloody five, ten years when we do some sort of kind of look back at stuff, yeah. we'll probably end up going, I'm oh, glad Josh done well. Yeah, yeah, he was really good. But it's still a reflection that's quite new. Yeah, but I'm yeah. still a bit raw about it. All right. Um, they did great food at the parrot party, mate. Did they? Yeah. Oh, next is Lee Tomlin. Oh, interesting. That was a weird how that kind of, yeah. Oh, God. I hate him. Yeah. I just... I, I think what, what people don't remember... Is that when we? I remember that first, the first championship season, maybe a little bit of the second as well. I remember going to Middlesbrough, and he was unplayable. He was so mm. good, best player. On the pitch. He was one of the best players in the championship, in my opinion. He scored some really good goals. Yeah. Even you know, even once he left us, he scored some pretty yeah. goals at Bristol City. Yeah. He played for Cardiff as well, and he scored some cracking and goals. He was, Very he was intelligent so good. player sometimes, yeah. but not for us. So good, and he was just. I thought, what? A, when we got him, I thought that's a really clever signing because he's so technically good. And then he turned up, didn't look like he'd give two... You know what I mean? Yeah, it didn't, really sound, like he, didn't. It didn't, it didn't sound like he liked the training, which obviously is intense. Yeah, it felt like it he was him. a player that was technically very good, really good, thought, oh, I've got the Prem move now. Went to Bournemouth and then looked at how hard it was and thought, oh, don't fancy that. Yeah. And he looked like he gained weight. He looked like he... I mean, Eddie Howe loves a technical player. He would have played him more if he if he give... give but I didn't... Caveat, I didn't think it helped when Callum Wilson's injury came because no. I think it was the... Leicester at home where we'll score that bicycle kick. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we started with Tomlin just off Wilson. And they looked like, oh, there could be something there. So I don't think that helped. But, oh, mate, I just don't like him. Don't, don't like his attitude anywhere he's been, to be honest with you. And what's he done, really? Yeah. Since I don't even think he can get in a card. Oh, he's a joke, isn't he? Would I, would I boo him? Yeah, I would get him in there. <laughs> I'd boo him. Just no. Can't stand him. Right, we've got Lewis Graben next. Mm. Two departed twice. Yeah, yeah, departed twice. Are we putting any of the first departure in it? Well, it's Difficult, isn't it? Because it's on that, because it was first champ, on yeah, it, going into the I second. Mean, we didn't with Jermaine Defoe. We didn't no, sort of consider his ten in a row. Uh, Lewis Graben was, his first stint was better than his second. Oh, of course, I mean. Naturally. Yeah, I think people people forget that he actually had a better goal to game ratio than Callum Wilson in the championship for us. Did Absolutely he score brilliant. in his second stint with us? Uh, no, I don't believe he did. No, I don't think he did. And he was brought in, wasn't he, with a phobie. Iturbe that January mm. and it made total sense because you just think just get him in it's another body in it mm. he was never going to play every week I remember him coming on at Newcastle and stuff and really putting a shift in always does always puts a shift in I love him I, I think he goes really underappreciated with the club I really do I just always felt like he gave us all And you watch Sunderland until I die right yeah did you think yeah. his attitude on that stank a little bit it did but I, but that doesn't affect how you feel about him in terms of AC Bournemouth no because we don't know I, I, I remember that first champ season I think it was Brighton coming for him and we thought we're going to lose him halfway through the yeah, season yeah. and Eddie most convincingly went no I'll stay till the end yes. and then I'll go yeah. and I thought fair play to you fair play to you you've stayed till the end you've given you all you've scored you're our top goal scorer and then you've had your move and we can get Callum Wilson in happy mm. days um, he scored a few since he's played against us. I remember him going to Norwich and scored against us. But I do like him. I do really like him. I, I always have done. I think he's always put his all in. I'll tell you what I always think was really noticeable was when we got him back for that loan where everyone thought, like I just mentioned, oh, he'll probably be a backup player. Yeah. 
the Bournemouth players were over the moon. Yeah. All of them were tweeting, like, we got grabs back. They, so, he was obviously a good character. Very important in the dressing room. I think yeah. he still makes with all of them from little conversations we've had with certain players. I think they all love him. So, yeah, I think a lot of people would put him in to see him do well, but I'm going for a door. A door? Yeah, I do. That's personal. Personal for me. I, I love Lewis Graben, yeah. All right, that's where uh, Tom's going there. He's putting him in still. A door, the guy. Next, we've got a player that, um, uh, you know... Uh, Food, <laughs> food wise. <laughs> I'm loving it at least, Musse. <sighs> I like to Musse. He, he, I like his charm. Yeah, he he was one that um, I really wanted to do well. Yeah, because I I saw the the sort of raw talent there, very explosive, and sco scored in that two one win over Arsenal. I think did he? No. No, he didn't. He oh, scored Ivan Wilson. A, I, no, he sorry, scored when we got battered to Arsenal, though. So yeah, oh, yeah, he of. scored against but Arsenal. But then he scored a couple of like, there was, big goals for us. But There was a stat at one point where, in one of the Premier League seasons, Strong. where we were losing or drawing so many games until Moussek came on. Yeah. And then we'd nick that's something. Right, that's right, he just that's impact. Right. I think yeah, it was all, right. almost because he didn't know what he was going to do. So yeah. out of the defenders, he just come on and was just direct and ran at people. And I did quite like him. And he, he scored a winning goal or two. I remember that. He did, there, yeah. You know, there was one match where it was a bit of a sort of harem scare match, but he then finished off with the win. I was like, oh my God, he's a legend. Yeah, yeah. He kind of bundled a few in, didn't he? And uh, yeah, he definitely had a bit of ability about him. There was a clear thing that he didn't have fitness. Yeah. I remember when he went to Sheffield United, he scored a few against like Chelsea and that when they had a really good season. Sheffield United, and he was banging him in. And I think I had a Bournemouth let him go. A few months down the line, he won't fit anymore, and now he's not fit at all. And he's never fit. Mm. And that was always a thing. I think Eddie always said he, he's struggling with the fitness side of it, um, which is frustrating because I always I always feel like if you've got talent, just put the bloody graft in. You've mm. got all this ability, and I I may be I may be question whether he put it all in. Yeah. Um, I think it was a bit of a no-brainer signing him. I think it was similar to Rico. You get him from on broad. You don't really know how it's going to go. It wasn't horrific, but he wasn't great. Um, but yeah, frustrating me that he didn't he didn't get more out of the ability they had. So I'm going to put less said the better. Less. I don't particularly want to see him do that well. I, I'm not bothered about him. Um, could have gone middle maybe, but now nah, I'm going to whack him in there. All right, mate. Um, obviously, this whole idea was was born out of seeing a certain England player booed against the Ivory Coast where a certain Max Gradle featured. Yeah, that's great to see him on, wasn't it? Yeah, and you know, that's another player who's been at the Cherries twice. Yeah, we've got a few of them, haven't we? He was, um, yeah, lovely to see him. I think he temporarily wore the armband for a bit as well yeah. when Aurier got sent off, which was really nice to see. And um, oh, We all love Maxie, don't we? I think he was brilliant when he first came, obviously, when he was a youngster, but talk about when he come back. That injury absolutely yeah, yeah. killed him because I thought that West Ham game that we all know, our Four first three, Premier League yeah. win, he was unplayable. He got Jenkinson sent off. Yeah. Uh, he was so good. And I remember when he when he come back from that injury, scored against Swansea and went over and hugged Eddie yeah, yeah. I just love him. I can't help but love him. Uh, really eccentric character that always gave his all. Uh, real, real shame it didn't quite happen, but that was because of injury. So, um, I mean, I, do you look out for his results? Absolutely. Do you? So what? This, is, this looks like top two territory. Oh, it's got to be top two for me. And like I say, the first thing, obviously an England fan, the first thing I was thinking about was Hope Gradle starts yeah. over every, anything. Um, and it was a shame because of the way the game went. Yeah. We couldn't really see him. But, yeah, I do love Gradle. Uh, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to the top. Adore him. Just, just snuck into the top for me. Let me know what you think of the comments about that. Let I me know. know. I'd love to know. I've got a feeling some people may, might say you've been too generous. No, I may have. I think I was torn between the two, but when I, when I saw his little smile, I had what, to whack him up there. What we'll also do is we'll give you the link to this tier list as well, mm -hmm. right? We'll give you a link to this tier list so you can do your own. Good chap. And you can screenshot it and then on Twitter, why don't you tag us in and let us know what you think. Mm. It'd be really interesting to see what other people say. Right, um player that scored a cracking equaliser for us at Luton Town. We, we lost the game. player that usually only came on for a few minutes at a time, Morgan Rogers. Rogers and like. <laughs> oh, bless him. Um, good goal at Luton. Uh, fair play. But he was absolutely crap. <laughs> <laughs> he was awful. Oh, man. One of their players, still young. Um, he's in the England setups as a young player, so it, it means he's not a bad footballer. He can't be a bad footballer. But for some reason, sometimes loans don't work out. Didn't quite work out for us. Um, I hope, I do hope that he does all right. Of course I do. But for a Bournemouth shirt and a small stint of time, I'm going to remember for a goal against Luton and being absolutely rank apart from that. Less said the better. Oh, OK. Less said the better. OK. I mean, this one, I'm not sure whether there's any point. Yeah. Uh, Nathan Ake, mate. Should we? Yeah, I'll try to get through it very quickly. One of the best players I've ever seen in a Bournemouth shirt. 
by far. Um, I don't understand why he isn't getting the plot. I saw someone the other day, I think Villa were linked with him, because obviously he's back up at City, yeah. um, which is no mean feat. And I think Villa were going, yeah, but is he any better than Mings? I think, Jesus Christ, you haven't seen Ake in person. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable player. Um, got injured, didn't he, in that relegation season that I think really, really did hamper He overstretched, didn't yes. he, at some point. It was a really good tackle, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but to, to prevent Jamie Vardy going for Yeah, that rings about. Yeah, yeah, I think it was that game. But absolute God, one of the best players in the Bournemouth shirt. As I say, I adore him. He's got yeah. straight up there, mate. Unbelievable. Yeah. He would probably, unless it was for sentimental value, he would be in the best 11 that I've ever seen in the Bournemouth shirt. Wow. In the centre-half, definitely. Superb. All right, uh, player that, another player we signed from Liverpool, albeit on loan, Nathaniel Klein. Um, it's a difficult one, really. It's, it's, it's middle or yeah. fourth. I, I agree with that. Definitely not in the top two. I'm not, I'm really not, I mean, this... Not in the top two, but not enough to hate him. Yeah. I, he was and, okay. And it's not even the Southampton connection. I don't, really no. care. I don't even care about that. But I probably thought he'd be maybe a little bit better than he was. I remember playing really well in... Oh, he had a really good... He set up a really good goal. Yeah, I know. Was I, it a Chelsea 4-0? It was in the Chelsea 4-0. I think... Past like, Junior. Yes. Yeah, it was yes, unbelievable. Yes, that's right. And he did give Josh us a bit... He, he gave us a bit of experience at a time we needed him. Yes. So I think it made sense, but there was no part of me that wanted to sign him. No. Um, do I know if he's still at... He's not at Liverpool. I don't know. Oh, no, he's gone somewhere. Is he Palace? He's somewhere like that, but I'm not even convinced. So, the fact that you don't even care... Got me in the middle. Yeah. Because I don't care enough. Yeah. yeah. But he was all right. Yeah, whatever. All right. Um, Rodrigo Raquel May. Roro. 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 Did he have a song? I can't remember. I tried well, to do Roro your boat. We, we were doing it at home anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, we would have been singing on our own terms. Yeah. Um, Who was that late goal against? Was it Derby? Derby. Great goal, that. 82nd minute against Derby at home. One yeah. Nil. Well, no, one all. Well, yeah, it was a late level. Up. Yeah, we hadn't got a result before um, the season. Um, I, it was one of them that, again, I didn't expect him to come in and start. I knew he'd be a bit part player. I knew he'd have a bit of flair, but probably not. And a turbo? Yeah, similar. Like a little it, bit better. I actually think while a turbo probably had a, had a bit more quality, yeah. but we just didn't, you know, we were in the Premier League, obviously. And Wan's not in this list, by the way, because he only played two games, not yeah. three. If you want to, I think was okay in the middle anyway. Yeah. Um, I think Roro, do I put him in the middle? I'm just trying to, like, vary it. I'd, I'm not bothered, though, so I've got yeah. to put him in the middle. I don't yeah. know. I, I almost want to say he wasn't really successful, but then I think, yeah, I just can't be asked. Yeah. Put him in the middle. He didn't play enough. All right. Next, we've got a player that um, had uh, a couple of superb seasons for us. He, he was signed very, very cheaply, and uh, certainly under Eddie's watch, really started to perform excellently. And then it, it sort of went wrong quite quickly. Ryan Fraser. <sighs> I mean, look. The, no, the, don't start giving away. I'll look at you, going to try and be all... Go on, do it. I've got to play devil's advocate. Yeah, do it. Obviously, if you would take that last season or, you know, basically before lockdown, mm. I mean, I think his form was actually pretty pretty poor ever since Arsenal were reportedly interested mm. in him and then he sort of lost his way a little Weird. bit but he put in some good performances and he did all right when he was played and then when lockdown happened that's when it all went wrong for him I think and I think if our opinion was made then hmm. it would be a lot different but what happened afterwards forms many an AFC Bournemouth fans opinion on this lad he's, he's young he's impressionable Probably led by his agent to do what he has to do. Chatted to a number of ex-footballers and stuff off the record who, who, who sort of suggest that professionally he probably did the right thing. Yeah. But when you look at the media sound bites that come out, I think he did an interview with Chris Temple on Radio Solent saying, uh, I wasn't really playing for the team, you know, like now I'm going to. You know, this was obviously pre-lockdown. So that got a bit of AC Bournemouth, you know, fans' backs up because, like, you know, why, you know, why say that? Why don't you just put in the effort without saying that I wasn't really playing for the team? And then once we did get relegated, that interview that said, "Had I played, I could have probably helped Bournemouth stay up." That for me was badly, badly judged. Yeah, and I think uh, you put it well. I think if if you were inside a little bit more, there's there's bound to be things like you say, the agent's going to be. I, I get it. He's kind of thinking if I go, if I play, and then I get injured then I can't get my move that I'm probably going to get. And I, it makes sense, and I'm going to get more money, and then I'll stay in the Premier League, and, and it all makes sense. But the fact of the matter is, uh, we're, I'm doing it from a fan's perspective. Mate, you come from Aberdeen, no one really knew you. 
Eddie Howe yeah. gave you a chance. He gave you a great loan at Ipswich where you were brilliant. His diet was crap at the time yeah, as well. Yeah, I remember reading about and, that. And, you know, Eddie Howe sort of, he sorted him a chef and sorted yeah. him uh, some lessons to cook and take care of himself properly. Yeah, and they clearly had a good relationship and Eddie made you suddenly a player that you were, you know, being spoke about in the Premier League, you know, and like, as you mentioned, like with Arsenal and teams like that and you were, you were playing brilliant football and that was all because of a chance that AFC Bournemouth and Eddie Howe gave you and you're very lucky that you're now teamed up with him again at Newcastle and because I don't think any other manager would, would mm. get the best out of you like Eddie can. But when Eddie needed you and when Bournemouth as a football club needed you to repay what we gave you, say we, you know what I mean, as a club, yeah. you didn't do it. You felt the, the move um, and you were selfish and I'm sure you'd agree with that. Um, <laughs> I, I, I like the way that you're him, addressing yeah. him he, He's watching, he's watching. <laughs> right. um, and, and I get it, but sometimes I think... Be, be, be a human, think of the fans, don't, you don't always have to think of all that crap, mm. just put it in for a month and hope you don't get injured and all this stuff and that you'll get the move anyway because you'll play bloody well for Bournemouth mm. and it would entitle you to a move. Um, he didn't put it in for us when we needed him to. Um, I mean, you know where I'm putting him, so yeah. Dave, I have to tell you. Ryan Fraser goes in to still a... No, <laughs> just no, can't stand him. What do you think? Do you think any different? If so, put in the comments why you feel different to how we do. We'd, we'd, we'd love to hear what people comment. got to say. And then, <laughs> and then Tom will log in as admin <laughs> and press delete. Um, Sam Surridge yeah. came um, up through the youth. Yeah, he did. Um, similarly, when we spoke about Jack Simpson, there's probably a lot of similarities. Put Jack Simpson in the middle. I do kind of want to see Surridge do well. For some reason, it didn't work at Stoke, and he's gone straight to Forest. Mm. I do wonder if, I'm not totally sure, but the manager of Forest now, Cooper, I think he had Surridge on loan at Swansea. Uh, yeah, he did, yeah. So there's the, yeah, so I wonder if he obviously likes him, so he's probably the one to get the best out of him. So, yes, I do want to see him do well, actually. But then when he left, did he leave on slightly under a cloud in terms of him yeah, maybe. wanting to have more minutes, etc.? Yeah, I kind of a little part of me thought, OK. But, I, you're, you, know, you're, you know, Dom Solanke, with the system that we were playing, like... You had a lot of chance off the bench and stuff. Yeah. I probably agree with the player we're going to come to after. Got more minutes off the bench than he should have over Surridge. Um, and Surridge always put a shift in when he played for us. But I felt like if you were desperate just to play football, you would have dropped down a League One then. Yeah. Because you've gone to Stoke and been a sub, yeah. and now you're at Forest and a sub. Yeah. So I'm just going to put him in the middle. Because I yeah. still don't dislike him. He come through, like you say. So I'll put him in the, whack him in the middle, mate. OK. He goes in the middle. Right final in. five. Next then, yeah. Final five. We've got Shane Long. Shane Long, ex Southampton player. Still at Southampton now, isn't he? Is he still there now? Yeah, he is, isn't he? He's yeah, he's still there now. And, yeah. you know, we, we signed him and he, he, he scored a few goals that crap. were lucky goals, I'd say. One of the arse and stuff, but... Crap. You're rubbish. He was rubbish. <laughs> no, um, listen, he was only here for a short amount of time, um, so I don't want to be too arse on him, because he, he was off the bench, wasn't he? And he was just to be another option, because we lost Josh King to come on for Solanke. But, and yeah, he bundled a few, but he was crap. Okay. Um, he was absolutely rubbish. He's a scummer. Um, if we play him again, I'm booing him. He's in the bottom. He's in the bottom. There he goes. Right, next uh, we've got four to go. Sean McDonald. You are the love of my <laughs> life, for oh, sure. <Sean> <laughs> yeah, love Macca. Um, uh, you know, unlucky not to be named in that legendary 11, I suppose, really, but didn't really play yeah. as many games as many others. And yeah. our midfield was strong. Yeah, because we've already put Adgos in OK, haven't we? Because we had um, Archer and Sermon. And Macca was another one that was probably stronger in League One, but what a servant, um, done really well everywhere he's been since then. He's another one similar to OK, had some really bad injuries. Mm. I think he's playing out in some division in Wales now. Yes, um, he is, yeah, that's yeah, right. Just yeah. to keep playing, which I was, and he's also good mates with Pewey, isn't he, which is yeah. nice. But love Macca, um, brilliant servant of the football club, right at the top for me. Yeah, right at yeah, the top. Uh, this one's interesting, Sylvain Distan. Uh, mm. And he, he was brought in and, you know, I think one of his first games, he played Everton, didn't he? Or, yeah. you know, one of his first games at least, anyway, in that three all. Mm. Um, and that was the result that sparked, uh, you know, a good run of results and, yeah. um, you know, Man United, Chelsea, etc. But did it work for him? Not really sure. Not really sure how many games he played, but it was, it was a fair few. Yeah, he played a few and I always thought on the pitch he, was, he showed his experience. He was decent. He was, he was pretty solid. Um, and, and he, you know, was, was, you could see why he played at the highest level. There's just a part of me, I know we've heard a few sandwiches recently that he didn't really get on with Eddie because Eddie was trying to teach him to do new things. Mm. Well, I get that this Dan's an old guy and saying, you know, I've, I've played at the highest. Yeah. But, you know, you, you've, you've signed for a club that want to play a certain way and we're just trying to implement that in you. I, a part of me thinks he just turned up for a last paycheck a little yeah, bit. Yeah. I don't think he really cared that much. 
he was all right. I mean, he's not playing football, I assume now. He must be bloody 40 or something. Um, I'm going to put less said, the better. Yeah, I agree. I'm not bothered about him, but I, yeah, it didn't really work, mate. TK Rancy, Rancy baby. baby. Oh, look at him. Look at him. Look at his beautiful face. Burnley away. Uh, yeah, Burnley away. What a, what a strike that was. And you know what? I swear that if that shot that he had against Barnsley at home, I mean, we won the game. I think Pewey scored it, but... To Kelly mm. Ranty was put in, dragged it one of the posts. I swear that if that goal had gone in, it'd have been like a sliding doors moment yeah. and we'd have a different TK. Uh, however, it's a player that obviously thrived on confidence. You know, scored a couple of goals at Birmingham, one from the spot. That was nice for him. Uh, scored these sort of goals every like every so often, but very quick player. But I mean, ended up moving on, farting in a manager's face. <laughs> And Which already puts about his, here. his career <laughs> just went downhill after that. Right. Um, I, think when, I think when you look, look back and reflect, you go, it was a million quid from a Swedish team, Malmo. It was a no-brainer to see if it worked, see what happened. It didn't work. He, he, he wasn't a success. He didn't score enough goals for a striker and he wasn't, wasn't really good enough for English football. Um, he was very likeable. Yeah. It's really difficult because I think... Do I look out for him and want to see him do well? Yeah. yeah. But should I put him two categories above Josh King? I mean, it's mental. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to do. Um, but you know what? It's only a bit of fun. And it didn't work out. But he didn't leave under a cloud. It just didn't work and he went. Um, he's, he's lovely, isn't he? Yeah, like seeing him do well. <laughs> Why not? And this is me saying, by the way, he's probably worse than every footballer in the categories <laughs> below him. Like... It's not about that. I'm just doing it off. Th- it's got feeling, really, and a bit of fun. So, yeah, oh, put him in there. Finally, uh, Tyrone Mings, oh, who's, you know, playing, playing for England every so often. Scored. Scored, yeah. I didn't see that goal because I had to get back to Waterloo. Just made it. Um, and, uh, obviously, Aston Villa fans, have, most Aston Villa fans like him, but there are a certain section, like there are uh, of AFC Bournemouth fans, that wonder, is he as good as mm. his price tag suggests? Seems like a... A nice character off the pitch. He, he, he really surprised me because he has a lot of charity done. He seems like a really good character. There's a reason why Southgate keeps him in the squad, and I don't think it's just out of football ability. When you say charity, are you, are you talking? You know, when you say charity, twelve lads playing down little down. And, oh, he done that as well. Yeah. And then he turns up. I mean, we're not a charity. No, man. no, no, no. no. <laughs> Until, I mean, oh yeah, you played, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Um, no, he I don't also know if I've mentioned that ever before. He also done. I think it was a Christmas Day. He goes to the homeless. Um, he does. Uh, what's it, what are they call them? I mean, food bank. Yeah. Yeah. He does. He does all that, and you know, fair play to him. But he seems like a really, a really genuine guy, and knows where he's come from, and all that stuff. Um, and then on the other hand, I think, why were you wearing a Villa full kit when you were still a bumble oh, player? Oh yes. Knob oh my God. Good point. It's just good like point. it's not that deep, but it just feels. Like, oh, you knob. Yeah. Um, in football in terms, he's not as good as everyone makes out, in my opinion. I think he's very average. Do you like seeing him do well? And if so, do you think him doing well is more luck than judgment? A little bit. I think he's definitely a good leader. There's a reason why, as I mentioned, why Southgate has him in the squad, because I think he's got that leadership quality. Um, but, as, as I mentioned earlier about kind of what, what does he do well, if he makes an error, I'll probably retweet it. Yeah. Or give it a little like on Twitter. If he scores a bullet header like he did for England, yeah. I just won't comment on it. But you'd never boo him. But I'd never boo him. So I think he's a decent guy and we made bloody good money. I still don't know how we done that. Is this category three or four? It could be, th- I don't know. No, it's, it's, it's two or four for me. Oh, okay. Two, two or oh. four because I am plus. I, uh, I am, I am plus. Yeah. Know, so <laughs> yeah, I've overthinking it too much for it to go in non plus. But um, for me, just, I would rather make a mistake than score. I can't help it. So, but I definitely wouldn't boo him. He's all right. But yeah, less said the better for me. And it makes it look quite nice on the tier. <laughs> there we go. There is our completed tier list. Also, I want to say that obviously you said earlier everyone can click on the link, do your own. But if we said to you, you've got the power to make one change, only one, yeah. what would be that one change? What one do you think I've got the most wrong? It would be interesting if there's a theme or not. Let us know. Let us know. Really enjoy right. doing that, Tom. That's yeah, really I enjoy doing that. I think it's all right. Like I say, it's, you can make counteracts for a lot of them, but uh, just try to go off, after reflecting a little bit, go off a bit of just gut feeling, really. Not too much about you know, their ability as a footballer, because, I mean, Harry Wilson's in the bottom, <laughs> who's yeah. actually all right at football, and then we got Tequilo ranting <laughs> in the top, so it's definitely not all on football ability. But, yeah, yeah, good fun. I enjoyed it, mate. Really, really good. So, yeah, from, from a windy pair at Parley. It's been a beautiful Thursday. Stay tuned to Back of the Net because uh, tomorrow the preview's coming out. Saturday we've got the free-for-all. Bristol City at home. Sunday, match day vlog. Monday, a special chat for you. Tuesday, 
preview material, Wednesday, travelling up to West Brom, mm. Thursday, vlog, Friday, preview material, Saturday, match oh, against... <laughs> I'm tired thinking about it. Oh, I'll cuddle you in Sheffield, mate, because it's going to be a long one. But I can't wait to get back to it, mate. The final ten. Come on. Come on. Make sure you press the subscribe button and uh, more content will be landing on your YouTube homepage very soon. But from myself, Sam Davis. And me, Tom Jordan. See you in the next one. See you later. We ain't Ryan Fraser. Come on.